YouTube, what is good? It's your man Ribs from Doing Film Things. This week I got my hands on some Fuji Neopan CN400. So this film's pretty interesting because it is black and white film that can be processed in C41 chemicals. I know, that's pretty interesting. So, of course I was excited about that given that I process so much C41 film. I actually got my hands on this film from today's video sponsor, The Cool Film Club. Cool Film Club is a film subscription service that features film of all types. They offer different monthly packages for different budgets and the film is mailed to your doorstep in these compact packages. Occasionally they include stickers and film processing offers as well. Cool Film Club has a loyalty program that lets you cash in points on their online shop. Make sure to use the discount code RIBS when making your purchase. So I loaded my Neopan into my Bronica ETRS and I headed for a spot under the Tower Bridge here in London that I love to go to all the time. I went during low tide so that I can get onto the little beach there and kind of enjoy the full scenery around me. I brought with me a bunch of lenses, but I brought one that I'm really excited about, and that is my 200 millimeter lens. I just got it and I've never really used it, so I was excited to put it to the test here finally. Let's take a look at some of the footage. First and foremost, I love the convenience of having this film. Being able to load it into the same exact kit that I used to develop my color film and then use the same exact chemicals is fantastic. Honestly, I have way too many things at home already. I've got a C41 kit, an ECN2 kit, and of course all of my RA4 chemicals for printing. So I don't need any more chemicals. I've got enough already. So it's very, very nice to be able to use some of that existing gear and put it to use with this black and white film. I do want to shoot more black and white, although I don't really shoot much at all. Um, but one of the reasons I don't shoot too much black and white is because I don't want to have to invest in black and white chemicals as well. So it's very nice to have an option like this that could potentially allow me to shoot more black and white and not have to buy any more different chemicals. So how does this film perform? Well, there's two main things that stuck out to me when using this film. The first thing has to do with the low contrast and the second thing has to do with the heavy grain. Low contrast is actually a nice thing for me. It really gives me a kind of foundation that I can then edit however I'd like. And since I don't have to focus on color, there's other things I'd like to focus on, which typically involve contrast, grain, sharpness, you know, all of the other different things that have to do with a photo. So I consider low contrast to actually be a valuable asset to a photo, um, at least to a starting product, because then you can go ahead and edit this as you please, whether that's in the dark room or whether that's digitally on Photoshop or Lightroom. And of course, having more options in this case is better because with black and white, I think sometimes for me, 
all of my images feel kind of flat and I feel like they're not that interesting and therefore having something that I can manipulate to my liking is definitely a added plus for me. If you want a film that gives you a look right out of the box and kind of has a distinguished kind of image, this probably isn't the film for you, honestly. I recommend going with something else that has a more kind of clear, obvious use to it. When it comes to grain, this is where I actually am not sure how I feel. This film actually has a lot more grain, or at least more visible grain, than I was assuming it would have. Um, when you zoom into some of these photos, especially in the shadows, the grain is extremely evident. Um, it almost looks like the film's cracking, you know, and, and that's kind of an exaggeration, but I was just shocked at how visible the grain was. This is built as a professional film, and therefore I figured, even though it's ISO 400, which means it is highly sensitive and you'll see a lot more grain, um, it's still more than I expected. It's not my experience with other films that are ISO 400 that are professional level, so it was kind of off-putting initially. I don't know ultimately if I care about this or not, because I think one of the beautiful things about film versus anything digital is that real natural grain. So I don't want to discount it entirely right now, but I think I need to shoot this film a little bit more in order to decide whether I actually really appreciate the grain here, or I think it's a little too much given that it's ISO professional film. The other thing to note about this film is actually the price. This film's not cheap at all. In fact, it puts you kind of in the color film territory, which for me is a little bit off-putting. I know a lot of people actually shoot black and white because it tends to be cheaper than color, and that's definitely a valid reason to shoot black and white. But this film comes in at around 9 to 10 pounds here in the UK, and I assume in the US it's similar except in the US currency. So I'm kind of surprised at how expensive this film is, and perhaps it has to do with the C41 processing capability in addition to it being a professional film. But if you compare this to other ISO 400 films that are out there, whether professional or not, I feel like this one really comes out a bit more aggressive in cost. So it's a bit interesting. I'm not sure if this is a problem for most people, but for me, it's definitely, you know, a little bit of a negative. Overall, I'm a bit undecided with this film. I think I really want to appreciate it, but there's a couple key things that are kind of holding me back, but I think I just need to shoot this film a lot more. I will say, the advantage of developing in C41 for me personally is a really big deal, and that alone might keep me coming back to this film. So we'll see where this goes from here, but for now, I think I need to mess around with this film a little bit more. I don't really hear too much chatter about this film, so I want you to let me know in the comments what you think. Have you used this film before? Do you think that developing in C41 is actually that useful or that advantageous? I don't know, hit me up in the comments. I definitely wanna shoot this film some more because I didn't get a chance to get in the darkroom with this one this time, but we'll see if in the future I can get a few more images and then hop in the darkroom and try to make some prints. I think for me, that'll ultimately help me decide whether I really like this film or not. So that's what I got for this week. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and leave me a like. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. That's what I got, y'all. Peace.